Hey guys, what's up? It's Scott Clark with Scooter Media, and in today's video, I am reviewing the Canon C100 Mark II cinema camera to see if it's still worth it here in 2022. Let's get into it. The Canon C100 Mark II was released at the end of 2014, making it about seven years old now, and was a successor to the hugely popular original C100. At the time of its release, it cost around $5,500, but now you can find it used for around $1,500, which in my opinion is a steal, but we'll get into that later. The Mark II featured some serious upgrades from the original C100, including a great flip-out OLED screen, a better EVF, the ability to record an MP4, built-in dual pixel autofocus, a built-in microphone for scratch audio when the handle is removed, as well as the ability to shoot 1080p, 60 frames per second, slow motion. The Canon C100 Mark II features a Super 35 sensor that is an EF mount, meaning you can attach all EF and EFS lenses. It shoots amazing 1080p footage up to 60 frames per second that is super sampled from 4K, and it looks fantastic. It isn't quite as sharp as 4K, but if you don't need 4K, this is some of the nicest looking 1080p you can get. I've used this camera for about six years now and I've always been happy with the image quality and have received multiple comments on the look of the videos. The image quality of this camera is definitely something it has going for it. One of my favorite things about this camera is the form factor. Some people might say it's somewhat ugly looking, but once you have it in your hands, it is the perfect balance of ergonomics and features. And as someone who normally shoots alone, I think this is the ultimate one person rig. You can shoot handheld and the camera just seems to perfectly balance in your hands, yet you can break the camera down by removing the handle and hand grip to make it a much smaller form factor. As I mentioned earlier, this camera is about seven years old now, and one of the surprising things about it is the great flip out OLED screen. The upgrade between this screen and that of the original C100 is night and day. This one fully articulates and the details of the image are easy to see due to it being a beautiful bright OLED screen. The buttons and joystick at the bottom of the screen are a treat to use and the menu system is very easy to navigate. Being a one man crew, the articulating screen is a must have as I can see the image from just about every angle, including filming myself. And the ease of use between the joystick and the menu system is fantastic and makes changing any menu settings a breeze. The electronic viewfinder on the C100 Mark II is also much better than its predecessor and is a huge step up from the tiny one that came on the original C100. It is big and bright and can be relied on for critical focus and exposure. I'm someone who uses the big OLED screen 95% of the time, but on those very bright sunny days, the EVF on this thing is invaluable. The large eye cup does an excellent job of keeping out the sun or bright lights and has saved me on multiple occasions when I would have had a really hard time seeing the OLED screen as nice and bright as it is. On the back of the camera, we have dual SD card slots with the ability to record continuously or to record a backup onto one of the cards. This is a great feature to ensure that if one of the SD cards fails, you have the footage backed up on the other card. Speaking of SD cards, one of the nice things about this camera is the file sizes of the footage. They are all relatively small and you can record all day with a cheap 64 gig card or two. Just below the card slots, we have the battery. And another great feature the C100 Mark II has going for it is the battery life. The camera comes with one battery and I purchased the larger size battery to have two and you can literally shoot all day on two batteries. The battery life is so good. And just above the card slots, we have the playback buttons to view the footage back from the camera. And speaking of buttons, as you can see, this camera is littered with buttons and many of them are assignable, so you can personalize this thing to suit your needs. I find the button layout to be very intuitive and after using it for a while, everything seems to be right at your fingertips. Moving on to the ins and outs of this camera, we have a headphone jack, the remote slot, a USB slot, a full-size HDMI, and a DC slot to plug this into the wall. On the handle, there are dual full-size XLR inputs to record great quality audio with plenty of controls to fine-tune the audio. There's also a 3.5 millimeter mic jack as well to plug in a Rode video mic or other external mic. And if you remove the handle, there's still a built-in microphone on the body to capture scratch audio, which is another great feature. And speaking of taking off the handle, you can remove the handle as well as the hand grip to make this a much smaller package. And this comes in super handy if you wanna throw this thing onto a gimbal to get those buttery smooth shots. With the C100 Mark II being a cinema camera, it also comes with built-in neutral density filters. And once you shoot with built-in ND filters, it is very hard to go back to using those screw-on filters. These provide two to six stops of ND and come in so handy on those bright sunny days. 
It is so easy to get those beautiful shallow depth of field shots, even in bright scenarios when using the built-in ND filters. With this being an older model cinema camera, it's actually surprising how good the autofocus is on it. It comes with Canon's dual pixel autofocus, available in one shot or continuous autofocus, and it works great. You are limited to the center of the screen, however, unless you use compatible STM lenses that will allow for face detect autofocus. I've used this on multiple occasions and it is quite fast and reliable for an older camera. Another great feature on the C100 Mark II is that there's no record limit, so you can record for as long as you need to, which is great for events, weddings, concerts, etc. It shoots in the 420 8-bit codec in both AVCHD and MP4, which isn't quite as nice as the 10-bit 422 codecs available now, but I have found that the footage is easily color graded. For picture styles, the Canon C100 Mark II offers three different styles. EOS Standard, which is similar to Canon's standard mode on its DSLR and mirrorless cameras. YDR, which provides more dynamic range but doesn't require as much color grading. And C-Log, which provides the most dynamic range but requires the most color grading because it is a very flat profile. I try and stay away from the EOS Standard as I find it to be just too harsh looking. I use C-Log 95% of the time and only use YDR if I have to turn around a project quickly without having time to grade as much. The base ISO on this camera is 850, which means shooting at this ISO will provide the cleanest image, and there are brackets around the 850 in the menu to easily find it. With this being a cinema camera, it also offers all of the video monitoring tools you would expect, including zebras, waveform monitor, focus peaking, as well as various aspect ratio markers and safe area markers. This camera also works very well in low light situations too. It may not be the low light king, but I've been very surprised at how I've been able to shoot in very low light situations and the footage comes out great. In summary, I think that this is a fantastic cinema camera. And if you can find it in the $1,500 range, it is a steal. If 4K isn't something that you need, I think that this is some of the nicest looking 1080p video there is and the quality of the image is amazing. With the built-in ND filters, full-size XLR audio, all the video monitoring features, and a great ergonomic form factor, this is a great camera for anyone doing documentaries, weddings, events, concerts, etc. If you're someone looking to just get into the cinema camera world, this would be a great start, and I would recommend this over the original C100 every time. There are enough upgrades on this camera to make the little bit of extra money it would cost totally worth it. If you guys found value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing as it really does make a difference. And I'd love to have you join me on this YouTube journey and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the videos on this channel. I recently put out a video talking about the Canon R6 for video, which is what I upgraded to after the C100 Mark II and shot this video with. If you're interested in checking that out, please click on the link here. Thanks for watching today's video. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.